Part 3, The Bucking Bronco. Explore the turbulent relationship between O.J. Simpson and Nicole Brown. From rumors of abuse during their Hollywood marriage to the tragic events leading to O.J.'s arrest. Discover the intense dynamics, concerns from friends and family, the infamous Bronco chase, and the unfolding legal drama ahead. Nineteen eighty five to nineteen ninety. Early years of marriage and signs of trouble. Cole Brown met OJ Simpson the day after her eighteenth birthday while working at a restaurant. She admitted she had no idea who OJ was when he walked in. Despite the age difference, the two hit it off and they got married on February second, nineteen eighty five. Nicole's youth and innocence, coupled with OJ's fame as a football star, created an intriguing dynamic from the beginning. However, their marriage quickly revealed signs of trouble. Friends of the couple described their relationship as volatile and and dramatic. OJ's controlling behavior was evident early on as he didn't like to let Nicole out of his sight. Nicole, who didn't have many close confidants, was effectively isolated from friends and family, leaving her with very little emotional support. One friend told the Los Angeles Times, the truth is, no one really knew her during her marriage. She was never free to be herself or have friends. Despite the facade of a fun-loving couple, there were underlying issues that caused concern among those close to them. OJ's infidelity was a recurring problem, leading to conflict confrontations with Nicole. Friends recalled a pattern where OJ would cheat, Nicole would find out, confront him, and the cycle would repeat. This behavior took a toll on Nicole's emotional well-being and further strained their marriage. The situation escalated when OJ's abusive tendencies became physical. Nicole's sister, Denise Brown, testified about an incident where OJ physically removed Nicole and Denise from their home, throwing Nicole against a wall and onto the ground. The abusive behavior was a deeply troubling aspect of their relationship that Nicole tried to conceal from those around her. These events witnessed by Denise had inspired her to fight for domestic abuse victims to this very day. 1990 to 1992. Divorce and Settlement. Nicole reached a breaking point and filed for divorce from OJ on February 25th, 1990. She moved into a rental home with their children seeking refuge from her toxic marriage. Despite the challenges of single parenthood, Nicole began to embrace her newfound independence and enjoyed spending time with her children. The divorce proceedings were finalized in October 1992, with Nicole receiving a significant settlement in a monthly child support payment from OJ. This financial arrangement provided Nicole with a sense of security as she embarked on her new chapter of her life as a single mother. However, the end of their marriage did not mark the end of their deathly toxic relationship. 1992 to 1994, attempted reconciliation and final breakup. Despite their divorce, OJ and Nicole attempted to reconcile in 1992, but their efforts were fraught with challenges as OJ's abusive behavior persisted. Records of police calls made by Nicole during this period documented instances of continued abuse, indicating that the cycle of violence had not been broken. He's back. Please. Well, okay, what does he look like? He's OJ Simpson. I think you know his record. Did you just send somebody oh. over here? Going nuts. Just stay on the line. OJ's jealousy and possessiveness also remained problematic. He was reportedly angered by Nicole's dating life, demonstrating a desire to control her even after their divorce. Despite Nicole's efforts to move on and establish independence, OJ's presence continued to loom large in her life, casting a shadow of fear and uncertainty. In May of 1994, Nicole had reached a definitive decision to permanently end her relationship with OJ. She was determined to break free from the cycle of abuse and create a better life for herself and her children. However, her plans for a fresh start would tragically be cut short. June 12, 1994, the tragic events unfold. On the evening of June 12, 1994, Nicole attended her daughter's recital with OJ. Later that night, Nicole received a call from her mother regarding forgotten glasses at a restaurant they dined at earlier. Nicole arranged for her friend, Ron Goldman, who worked at the restaurant to return the glasses by dropping them off at her place. Around 10 p.m., a neighbor heard Nicole's dog barking, prompting concern. Another neighbor found Nicole's dog outside with bloody paws, indicating that something was amiss. Upon investigation, Nicole's lifeless body, alongside Ron Goldman, was discovered outside her home in Brentwood. The gruesome scene sent shockwaves through the community and sparked a widespread investigation into their murders. June 16, 1994, Burial and Investigation Nicole was laid to rest on June 16, 1994 in a somber ceremony attended by family and friends that included O.J. Simpson. As mourners grappled with the shock and the grief of her untimely death, law enforcement officials launched a comprehensive investigation into the double homicide. LAPD detectives were tasked with gathering evidence and identifying potential suspects in the brutal killings. Meanwhile, 
O.J. Simpson was thrust into the spotlight once again, this time as a person of interest in the murder investigation. Detectives sought to question O.J. about the events leading up to Nicole's death and his whereabouts on the night of the murders. However, their attempts to contact him would set off a chain of events that would captivate the nation and forever change the course of the investigation. June 17, 1994, O.J. Simpson becomes a fugitive. Detectives arrive at O.J.'s estate to bring him in for questioning as he is now a person of interest in the murder. However, their attempt to contact OJ were met with silence. As they search the property, they discover evidence linking OJ to the murders. As news of OJ's potential involvement spread, the White Hot public interest intensified further. Possibly fueled with paranoia from guilt, OJ decided not to cooperate with authorities. Instead, he made the shocking decision to flee, igniting one of the most infamous police chases in history. The ensuing pursuit, televised live, captivated millions of viewers as they watched OJ evade law enforcement in a white Ford Bronco driven by his friend Al Cowlings. The slow speed chase played out on the Los Angeles highways with OJ's fate hanging in the balance. OJ, clearly on the edge of his sanity, was in the back of the vehicle with a pistol touching his tonsils as his loyal friend Al drove on. June 17, 1994, the Bronco Chase. The Bronco chase unfolded in real time, with news helicopters tracking OJ's every move as he attempted to evade capture. Millions of viewers tuned in to witness the surreal spectacle, unsure of how it would ultimately unfold. As OJ's Bronco made its way through Los Angeles, spectators gathered along the route, cheering him on and urging him to flee. Many fans even chanted the famous Hertz commercial, OJ starred in, Go, OJ, go! The chase took on a surreal quality with OJ's former coach, John McKay, pleading with him to surrender as the nation watched in disbelief. Despite pleas from loved ones and law enforcement officials, OJ remained steadfast in his refusal to surrender, maintaining his innocence as he continued to evade capture. The chase came to a dramatic conclusion at OJ's Brentwood estate, where he finally surrendered to authorities. Aftermath, trial and controversy. The trial that followed OJ's arrest would become one of the most highly publicized and controversial legal proceedings in American history. The police had overwhelming evidence implicating OJ in the murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman, including DNA evidence and the infamous Bronco Chase. The trial exposed deep divisions within society, with many questioning the role of race, wealth, and celebrity in the criminal justice system. Stay with us in part four, where we discuss OJ's all-star defense team, the overwhelming evidence stacked against him, as well as the prosecution team that would fail to convict this all-time great gridiron legend. That's all the slime for today. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for listening.